So it's no secret that here on the Kittle channel, we like to talk about trends a lot, specifically design trends, what's trending, what's not trending, what's in, what's out. Something that is trending right now, or at least we have deemed to be trending, is this thing called Japandi design. And essentially, at its core is basically a mixture of Scandinavian art and Japanese-inspired art. And so those things to collide, and Scandinavian art with its very clean-cut grids. Most often, you're going to be using a grid when you're designing these kinds of things. You're going to have text maybe in the corners to try to lay out blocks. It's very apparent, very blatant right up front when you're looking at this, that it is very calculated and mathematical in the way that it's created along with the Japanese style art where a lot of things are very pattern based pattern influenced and then a lot of the times you're going to be throwing in maybe a Chinese or Japanese font Japanese or Chinese characters as well as maybe a typical phrase or a common phrase that's you know common to that culture not claiming that I know absolutely anything so I'm definitely unlearning that entire category but I do know how to design a pretty good poster and matter of fact I know how to do it in Kittle so we're gonna jump into Kittle and right off the bat you can see that this one in the middle actually looks kind of familiar that's because it is this one right here. So immediately after I was done designing this we just sent it off and got it printed and it came in and I was like, that's sick. So we put it in a frame and now it is in the back of my set from now until whenever I deem that I don't want it to be there. So like I mentioned before with grids, if I turn on my grids here by using command and then apostrophe, you can immediately see that this was designed to a grid. This is justified in the upper left corner, upper right, bottom left, bottom right. And then I just added like a little line there to kind of differentiate and, and make it a little bit more interesting. I do not know what's going on here. Actually, that is the shape interesting. I thought that there was some sort of glitch, but that's literally the design. That is what I did. That's really, really cool. Um, and then for some reason, this artboard is not the same background color as the others, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's gonna bug me the rest of the video, so I'm gonna change that, and now they're the same. That's really cool. So up at the top here with this font, which is Delagothic one, I'm using something that's called Ramanji, which is basically the English spelling and pronunciation of Japanese words. So for the person that knows those languages and already is going to say that they've noticed something that's incorrect about this poster, this was done on purpose. I didn't accidentally hit it. It was purpose. This is that English pronunciation of the Japanese phrase. These are actually Chinese characters, and this was just kind of a little to just, I wanted to do both because it looked cool. I wanted to illustrate both. You actually can. I did copy and paste the Japanese characters from that, and this font can do both, and not every font can actually do a Chinese character or a Japanese character. They're glyphs. A lot of fonts don't have the glyphs available in the library to be able to do that. But with this font, Delagothic 1, you can do that very easily. You can also just go to the typeface panel, and if you type in Japan, you'll see the fonts that you're able to do Japanese characters with. Same with Chinese, you could find all of the fonts that have Chinese characters available to use. So one of the features that I use to make this process really, really easy and do three posters very, very fast is the replace feature. And color-wise, I actually used the color palette tool, which I'll demo here in a second. But this was the original one that I made. And then from there, I selected my shape. So that's imperative. You got to make sure that it's selected. And I typed in up here in the elements panel, abstract pattern. And then scroll down a little bit and you're going to find all of these different abstract square based patterns. And if I just hit replace, it's going to change and keep the same color and sizing. So I could go through here and hit replace on all of these and test out a bunch of different designs and see which one I like. And that's essentially what I did until I found this one, which I felt like was the most attractive for this. And then another thing that I can do is, you know, let's say I like this poster a lot and I want to copy it and do maybe different text, but I also want to do different colors. I can have that one artboard selected, 
go to browse color palettes and you can either have your own palettes from brand kits that you've made or you can have these uh, other palettes just under more palettes. These are gonna be there, they're the same for everybody and you can go down and, and pick from color palettes. Just already look good together. They're guaranteed to look good. Which colors it's gonna pick from these palettes is dependent upon the hue of the two colors that you give it. So if you have this and that square is white and this thing is black and you scroll through, it's not really gonna give you anything. Like they have to be colors already initially. All this is gonna do is based on the lightness, the brightness or the darkness of these colors, it's going to make suggestions of which of these colors on these palettes is closest to match that. Like I said, with the grid, this is just a phenomenal feature to use for this kind of style. You know, it really is not as hard as anybody would make it out to be. It's as easy as you wanna make it. You only have to be confined to the grid as much as you want to be. So you have the grid that is on your artboard if you do the command apostrophe thing, but you also have rulers and guides that you can bring down. So like, let's say I wanted to use the grid to give myself these guides, but then I didn't wanna look at those stupid squares the entire time. You know, I could pull these guides over and then hit command apostrophe and now the grid is gone, but I still have the guides. Crucial and honestly, I wish I had done that when I made this and I did not do that and that would have been really helpful because this is a lot cleaner than looking at this. This is actually pretty annoying to look at. Having the grids there to be able to pull guides and match to, super helpful. If you need the grid to be in smaller sizes, you can do this right here, which will actually cut the grid up smaller. So like if I did 40, you know, obviously it's gonna fit four squares into one. So if I wanted the margin to actually be, you know, here and expand the poster out to that, I could by just grabbing everything and then pulling it over to those sides. In my humble opinion, in my advice to anybody, erring on the side of a little bit more margin is always better. It's gonna give your design breathing room, it's gonna make things a lot more legible, digestible, and it's just gonna make things look better in general. So feel free to go steal this template, all three of these are going to be on my Kittle page, which is linked down in the description. You can go change the text, play around with that replace feature, change the colors, and then, you know, technically you could list it on Etsy or whatever platform, maybe print it out at home. Definitely go give it a try. It's for sure a fun design style. Well, that is all for the video today. Make sure to like and leave a comment down below. Which one of these three posters is your favorite? Which one of these three would you actually put in your house? Hey, if it's all three, say all three. So which one of these three posters, you know, the shapes and the colors most resonates with you and do you like the best? Make sure to subscribe to the Kittle YouTube page if you are not already, and we will see you in the next video.